Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam Amma ba'd Today we're going to talk about something incredibly important Which is Tawheed And we've talked about Tawheed before But especially you can never uh, get enough of the explanation of Tawheed and revisiting Tawheed and reminding yourself about Tawheed. Tawheed means monotheism. In, in English, it means monotheism. What does monotheism mean? It means that there is no God worthy of worship except Allah. This is what Islamic monotheism is. It means Allah is the only God worthy of worship. And Tawheed has three categories. The first one being Tawheed al rububiyyah the second one Tawheed al and the third one Tawheed al-Asma'i wa Sifat. And Tawheed uh, al rububiyyah first, this, this is Tawheed al rububiyyah here. Tawheed al rububiyyah is talking about the unity of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's Lordship, which means that Allah is the only Lord. Who is the only Lord? Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Naam. So this is why I wrote here, a rububiyyah, Allah, part of rububiyyah is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the Lord of everything. What do we say in Surah Al-Fatiha? By the, A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Ar-Rajim, Bismillah Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Alhamdulillah. We say all praises belongs to Allah Rabbil Alameen. Rabbil Alameen meaning the Lord of everything. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the Lord of everything, of all the create, uh, creatures and all of creation. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the creator of everything. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also created he created everything, okay? And that's a part of His Lordship, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the Lord of everything. He created everything. He uh, sustains and provides for everything. He is a razak a razak means He gives you the risk. He gives you the risk. It could be your financial risk, like money and to, to be able to buy and, 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 and so forth. But risk also means like your sustenance. Everything you eat, you had pasta tonight, that is part of your risk. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has written that for you. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created uh, everything. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the creator of the heavens and earth. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ وَالْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسِ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ I have not created man and jinn except for the pur purpose of worshipping me. So that means a part of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's rububiyya is that He created everything. وَمَا خَلَقْتُ I have not created mankind in jinn except for the purpose of worshipping me. Meaning the reason Allah created us is what, Rashad? To worship Him and Him alone. That means Allah is the what? He is the creator. He's the creator of the heavens and earth. He is the owner of all. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, is the, he, he owns everything. And he is the provider, as we said, the sustainer. So, arububiyya, it is the oneness of Allah, the Almighty in his actions. Okay? For example, Allah created, provides, sustains everything. He gives life and he gives death. So, when we, uh, we received life from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah gave us life. He created us. And we shall return to Allah. Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un. We uh, were created by Allah and to Him we shall return. That means we will die and then we will be resurrected again. Everyone's going to die. Everyone shall taste death. And this is by the command of who? of Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that's a part of His rububiyya, His Lordship. That he, he gives life, and He gives death, and He orders all affairs, and that He is the Lord of all creation, and is over all things omnipotent. 
He is over all things omnipotent. So this is Arububiya. The second category we want to talk about, which is very important, and the reason I want to emphasize this, because Rububiya, even Christians, Jews, and maybe Sikhs and other religions, they believe in Rububiya. They believe that if you ask them and they say, who created the heavens and earth? They'll say, God did. They'll say, Allah did. Okay? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Quran, uh, he mentions where the Prophet sallallahu was told to ask the mushrikeen, you know, that when you ask them, that they will say, you ask them about who their Lord is, فَسَيُقُولُونَ اللَّهِ فَكُلْ أَفَلَا تَتَّقُونَ So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Qur'an, فِي كِتَابِهِ الْكَرِيمِ يَا أَيُّهَا النَّاسِ يَا أَيُّهَا النَّاسَ عَبُودُ الرَّبُّكُمْ أَلَّذِي خَلَقَكُمْ وَالَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلَكُمْ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ وَالَّذِي جَعَلَ لَكُمْ الْعَرْضَ فِرَاشًا وَالسَّمَاءِ بِنَاءً وَأَنزَلَ مِنَ السَّمَاءِ مَاءً فَأَخْرَجَ بِهِ مِنْ ثَمَرَاتٍ رِزْقًا لَكُمْ فَلَا تَجْعَلُوا لِلَّهِ يَنْدَادًا وَأَنْتُمْ تَعْلَمُونَ Actually the verse I was thinking of is another verse. That verse gives us the importance of worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But there's a verse where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that and, and affirms for us that even the people who are pagans, meaning they worship anything and everything, that they believe in Allah. But they worship somebody else to get to Allah. They worship maybe people in the graves, or they worship prophets like the Christians. They worship Jesus alayhi salatu wasalam. Some people who have names as Muslims, they worship the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. So this goes against Rububiyyah and it goes against Uluhiyyah. Now back to Uluhiyyah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَعْبُدُ اللَّهَ وَلَا تُشْرِكُوا بِهِ شَيْئًا Allah says, and worship Allah. He commanded us, وَعْبُدُ اللَّهَ وَلَا, uh, وَلَا تُشْرِكُوا بِهِ شَيْئًا And do not associate partners with Him. That is Uluhiyyah. Meaning that all worship goes to Allah. They also call it in Arabic, they also say, they call it Tawheed al Ibadah. Tawheed al Ibadah as well. Which means that all worship goes to who, Sina? To Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we call that what kind of Tawheed? What category of Tawheed do we call that? Al Uluhiyah. Al Uluhiyah. Or uh, we also call it Tawheed al Ibadah. Meaning the Tawheed of worship or the unity of worship that all worship goes to Allah things like what or what is worship Ibn a famous scholar named Shaykh al-Islam Ibn Taymiyyah he said al-ibadatu kullu ma yuhibbuhu Allah wa yardahu min af'al min af'al al-zahir wa batin he said worship worship is everything that Allah loves and is pleased with from your deeds deeds means your actions the things you do uh, that are open and, and your sayings as well and what you say on your tongue what does this mean? that means when you make dhikr on your tongue that's worship that's ibadah if you say alhamdulillah astaghfirullah subhanallah allahu akbar that is dhikr and that you said on your tongue and you have that intention in your heart that's worship of Allah so that's a type of worship another type of worship when we make salat or we make dua or we make umrah or we make hajj all of that is worship those are physical types of worship or if you pay zakat or if you give charity to someone you give them one real you give them ten reals you give them dollars you give them whatever that is worship if your intention is to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if you're doing it because you want to please Allah that is a type of worship and the worship Rashad goes to who? all our worship should go to who? to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that is what kind of tawheed sinna? 
Tawheed al-Ibadah. So that's the second category. Tawheed al-Ibadah, all worship goes to Allah. And all, all throughout the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, for example, قَالَ سُبْحَانَ فِي كِتَابِ الْكَرِيمِ وَقَضَى رَبُّكَ أَلَا تَعْبُدُوا إِلَّا إِيَّاهُ بِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, And your Lord has decreed for you that you worship none except Him. And to your parents be uh, kind. Being kind to your parents is also what, Rashad? When you're good to your parents, you listen to your mom. Uh-huh. That's what? That's worship. That's worship. If you're doing it to please Allah. That's a type of worship as well. And even Allah mentions it along with Tawheed. So that shows you it's a very important act of... What is it? Uh, it's an act of worship. That's a part of Tawheed Ibadah. That you do all of your actions to please Allah. Your prayer, your fasting, your hajj, everything. All of it is to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is Tawheed Al-Ibadah. Hi, Iwa. Yeah. Okay. And so, as, as we mentioned, that all of this worship, it belongs to Allah. So that means you have to have sincerity in your heart. Ikhlas. Worship also has two pillars. And we'll just quickly describe it. And we said this many times. The first one is sincerity. Ikhlas. Sincerity in your intention. That means you're worshiping only Allah alone. You're worshiping to please Allah alone. When you pray, you don't pray so the people can see you. You don't supplicate and make your uh, dua so people can see you. You don't make umrah so people can see you. You make umrah for who? To, for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to please Allah. And the second thing, who knows what the second pillar of worship is? You have to have ikhlas, we mentioned many times before, sincerity. And you have to have, who knows? Huh? That is sincerity. Huh? Yes, mutaba. We have to follow the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Okay, we follow the Prophet. That's the second pillar of ibadah, the second foundation of worship. So, when we try to practice tawheed uluhiyah, meaning all the worship belongs to Allah, we have to do it for the sake of Allah to please Him, and we have to follow the Prophet. That means, for example, even if your heart, you're sincere, you say, I'm doing this only for Allah, I'm not showing off, I'm, I'm praying to Allah, but you do it different than the Prophet. You say, I think I'm going to pray for Fajr, today I'm going to pray five rakats. Can you do that, Sina? Why? Uh, Because you're not following who? You're not following the Prophet. Sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Naam. You're not following the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And that's the second pillar. So when you worship Allah, you have to do it please, to please Allah. And you have to follow the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. You can't come up with a new type of worship. It's, it's not accepted in Islam. Because the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam said in the hadith of Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, he said, Whoever does something in this affair of ours, meaning in Islam, it's rejected. If they do something new in this affair of ours, innovation, you can't come up with a new type of worship. The worship's already in the Quran, in the Sunnah of the Prophet. So, the second category of Tawheed uh, Nada is Uluhiya. It is Tawheed or Ibadah, meaning all worship belongs to Allah alone. The first type is Rububiya. Allah is the Lord of everything. He created everything. He provided everything. Owner of all things. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim. Maliki Yawmiddin. Maliki Yawmiddin means He is the owner of the Day of Judgment. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the owner of the uh, uh, Maliki Yawm din He's the owner of the Day of Judgment. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's the owner of everything. All the mulk belongs to Allah. Allah is a creator, provider, sustainer. This is His rububiya. Uluhiya, all the worship goes to Allah. And the third category is Al-Asma'i wa Sifat. The divine names and attributes. Meaning, Sina, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has names. Did you know that? 
Okay, good. And he has sifat, meaning with those names, those names have a meaning. They're just not names. They have a meaning too. For example, if we say Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim. Ar-Rahman means Allah is the most merciful. That's his name. And that means if he is Ar-Rahman, he has Rahma, he has mercy. So his name, he's the most merciful and he has mercy. He has mercy more than anything else. Mercy meaning that he has concern and he gives and uh, for, for, for all of his cre- uh, creation, even those who don't believe in him, even those who hate him, Allah still has mercy upon them. He lets them breathe. He gives them a chance to make repentance. He gives them a chance to be believers. He gives them a chance. He gives us so many chances. This is from his mercy. He gives them water. He gives them food. He gives them rains. Man yirzakakum min as wal ard. Uh, this is in the verse Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says who gives you uh, who gives you risk and provisions from the sky and the earth Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created everything he made the plants grow he is so merciful to us the most merciful and he's the provider and the creator of all things he's al hayyul qayyum Allah la ilaha illahu al hayyul qayyum Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the ever living of all, uh, he's the ever li- living and all things need Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he doesn't need his creation al hayyul qayyum he is he he does ever all his creatures need him and he does not need us that's a part of his, that's one of his names and his attributes, his, his characteristics, characteristics that he possesses. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is most merciful. He, he never dies. He gives life and, he, and gives death or causes people to die. All creatures need him and he does not need them. And that's one of his characteristics. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَهُوَ أَوَّلُ وَالْآخِرُ وَالظَّاهِرُ وَالْبَاطِنُ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, He is the first and He is the last. He's talking about Himself. He is the first and He is the last. No one is before Allah and no one is after Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Those are names He gave to Himself, subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's His name. Those are His, his, his divine names. Uh, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al alim He is the, He is, uh, He has the all, He has. Uh, perfect knowledge. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's knowledge is infinite and perfect. That's his characteristic. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, for example, Qala subhanahu fi kitabi al kareem the verse we mentioned earlier, Ya ayyu al ladina, Ya ayyu al nas, Ya ayyu al nas, Abudu rabbukum al ladi khalakukum. وَالَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّكُونَ الَّذِي جَعْلَ لَكُمْ الْأَرْضَ فِرَاشًا وَالسَّمَاءَ بِنَاءً وَأَنْزَلَ مِنَ السَّمَاءِ مَاءً فَأَخْرَجَ بِهِ مِنْ ثَمَرَاتِ رِزْقٍ لَكُمْ فَلَا تَجْعَلُوا لِلَّهِ أَنْدَادٍ وَأَنْتُمْ تَعْلَمُونَ Beautiful verse here. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, يَا أَيُّهَا النَّاسِ يَا أَيُّهَا النَّاسِ أَعْبُدُ الرُّ Ya ayyuhan nas a'budur rabbukum alladhi khalaqakum so allah says o oh mankind he addresses all people muslims and non-muslims he said o oh mankind worship your lord when he says worship your lord that's uluhiyah that's ibadah all worship belongs to allah alone wa'budur rabbukum uh, and he says ya ayyuhan nas a'budur rabbukum Ya ayyuha an-nas su'budu rabbukum alladhi khalaqakum the one who created you that's his his rububiya he's the creator of all things okay and cre- the fact that he creates is also one of his his uh, sifat his characteristic so then that goes into his sifat as well his his names and his 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 attributes that he is al khaliq that's one of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's name, names and his attributes because he creates. Alladhi khalaqukum walladhina min qablakum. And he created you and those people who came before you. 
min qablikum la'alakum tattakun in order that you would fear him that you would stay away from haram and do the halal then allah says alladhi ja'ala lakum al-ard firashan was samaa bina'an wa anzala min as-samaa'i ma'a that allah he is the one who made for you the earth like a, a bed and the sky uh, like pillars وَأَنزَلَ مِنَ السَّمَاءِ مَاءً And He made rain come from the sky to the earth. فَأَخْرَجَ بِهِ مِنْ ثَمَرَاتِ رِزْقٍ لَكُمْ And from that rain, Allah causes plants to grow. You've seen the plants and the trees. Who do you think created them? Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created. And He caused the rain. Who caused the rain? Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So He causes the rain and from that مِنْ ثَمَرَاتِ رِزْقٍ لَكُمْ And he causes the plants to grow, and then you eat from the plants. You like salad, you like uh, fruit. All that's because Allah created all those things and allowed for them to grow. And he gave sustenance to those things and sustenance to you. He gave you what you need, and he gave those plants what they need. And then the animals eat the plants, and then you go and you buy, uh, you buy beef, you buy cow, you eat... Uh, goats and all of those things, so you eat their meat. And they got the rizq from Allah as well. They got it from the plants. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the plants and gave, and gave them their, their sustenance. So everything is provided for by Allah because Allah is the provider. His rububiyyah and His uluhiyyah. We should be thankful so we should worship Him alone. And we should know that He has divine names and attributes and actions that He does. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Fi kitabihi al kareem uh, Ar-Rahman ala al-Arsh istawa Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about Himself, Ar-Rahman, the most merciful. Ala al-Arsh istawa rose above His throne. Allah rose above His throne. So Allah is above His creation because He told us that He is above His creation, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we believe He's above His creation. He's not in His creation. He's not in people. He's not in a spirit. He's not in the animals. But all of those things worship Allah who's above His creation. And we believe as Allah said about Himself and as the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, said about Him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Prophet وسلم, said, and this is a part of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's names and attributes, some of the things that Allah does, is that uh, the Prophet وسلم, said, Yanzulu Rabbuna tabarak wa ta'ala kulu thuluthu layl al akhir fa That Allah comes to the lowest heaven every last third of the night and ask about those people who are praying and ask if they want forgiveness he asks the angels so that shows us that one of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's attributes is that he has he comes down he descends to the lowest heaven and they call that sifa to nuzul that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he comes down to the lowest heaven we don't know how he comes down we don't know how we don't know how Allah rose above his throne we don't know but we believe it because the prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam said and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said it in the Quran so that's a little bit about tawhid monotheism which is the belief that there is, there's only one God worthy of worship, that He has Rububiya, His Lordship, that Al Uluhiya, that all things worship Him in Him alone, or all, uh, all worship belongs to Him in Him alone, and that He has divine names and attributes that we can worship Him by. We can call Ar Rahman, please give me mercy. Uh, Ar Razak, please provide for me. You can call him by his names, because those are Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's divine names. And we worship him by his divine names. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Anything I said correct was from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Anything I said that was a mistake was from myself and the shaitan. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyya Muhammad.